I know, I know, I'm supposed to be like the thin and light, pen-enabled, two-in-one enthusiast, so why then have I taken so long to take a look at the Z13 2025 with the Ryzen AI Max 395 chip in it? Honestly, it came down to what I thought were some major deal breakers. No NVIDIA GPU, so no CUDA acceleration for LLMs or image generation, no OLED display, I decided sometime last year I could never go back to an LCD display and even a 180 hertz refresh rate on the new Z13 2025 wasn't going to pull me away. And as for raw gaming power, the Z13, it's an iGPU, right? It looked like a step backward from last year's RTX 4070 version. And then there's comfort. In previous generations, I've always found the Z13 to be, well, uncomfortable. Sharp edges, heavyweight, not exactly what I want from something that calls itself a tablet. And when it comes to the form factor in general, I've always said that when you compare the Z13 to clamshell 2-in-1 laptops, a Z13 is mediocre as a laptop because of the form factor and mediocre as a tablet because of the weight. At least the clamshell form factors are superb laptops, even if it's a so-so tablet when folded. So I wasn't even tempted by the 2025 ROG Flow Z13. And months went by, and my perfect device, the Surface Pro 11th Gen Intel Lunar Lake version came out. I was super happy with this device. So what's changed? Why the interest in the ROG Flow Z13 now? Those reservations, they haven't exactly gone away at all. But lately, as I've been experimenting with larger and larger large language models, I've started to see the upside of AMD's Strix Halo strategy. That shared memory architecture on the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with up to 128 gigabytes of unified RAM and 256 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth means that your GPU and CPU can tap the same massive memory pool. That's a game changer if you're running local models or dabbling in AI workflows. And combine that with some really solid mixture of experts, models coming online recently like QN3, 30B, A3B, and others. Yeah, the Flow Z13 suddenly becomes a lot more interesting. Especially when you keep in mind that in order to get 128 gigabytes of unified VRAM, some people are shelling out over $3,500 for Mac Studios that have 128 gigabytes. So I'm not sold entirely on the Z13 yet, but I was finally interested enough to get one in the studio to try it out. Let's talk form factor. You can see this year the Z13 is closer than ever to the Surface Pro's dimensions and feel. Uh, it's still a bit chunky, still a bit sharp around the edges, but the rubber tabs and refined edges make it a lot nicer to use. Surface Pro still has the nice Alcantara finish where the Z13 has a smooth leather finish that's actually pretty nice. Both of them have keyboards that pull away, but only the Surface Pro has this party trick. Still works even when disconnected. If you try that on the Z13, you're not going to get nearly as far. Talking about the displays, I was actually really impressed with the IPS LCD display on the Z13. It actually is pretty vibrant, almost as vibrant as the OLED. Obviously the contrast ratio isn't there, the deep blacks aren't there, but the response time is quite good on this display. It does not have the anti-reflective coating either that the Surface Pro has, but if we look at the kickstands, uh, you can see again these are so close in their form factors. It, it's nice to see the Z13 evolve like this. It feels less chonky than before, even though um, it maybe isn't that much thinner than before, but the dimensions and the kickstand are pretty much exactly the same. They fold down the same way. Um, and the thickness is, while yes, it's definitely much thicker than the Surface Pro, it's a little more svelte than last year's. Looking at the type covers, 
they're both quite nice. And again, I can't help having this feeling that they're they're just so close in form factor. Let's weigh them though. Uh, this is kind of a chunky boy, 1635 grams. I've measured it more than the manufacturers. The Service Pro 11, 1250. It's about a 30 plus percent difference in weight. And if we remove the kickstands, uh, the Surface Pro 11th Gen Intel, 895 grams versus the Z13 without the keyboard, 1232. It's almost 40% heavier. Looking at the ports, you get a micro SD, power, HDMI, and two Thunderbolt ports. And on the other side, you get a power, volume, uh, kind of a function key, USB, and a headphone jack. Compared to the Surface Pro 11, which is pretty anemic, you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a Service Connect port. So that's it. Okay, so I've talked about how the Surface Pro 11 Intel is actually quite powerful. Uh, I've tuned these both to pull 52 watts from the wall, which is kind of the maximum that the Surface Pro 11 can pull. And you can see that the Surface Pro 11 is doing about 41 frames per second. And the Z13 is pulling about 46 frames per second. So using the same amount of power, the Z13 is about 12% more efficient. But with the Surface, this is as fast as it's ever going to go. We're, ma we're maxed out. Uh, it's not really going to go much faster than this. But let's look what the Z13 can do because right now we're kind of on the lowest power setting. I tuned them to the same amount of wattage, but if we give it more power, bump it up here uh, to 40 watts, and suddenly, uh, you know, we're, we're cooking. And if we keep increasing it, 50 watts, now we're up to almost 90 and you can just keep doing this. You just keep bumping up the power. Uh, it's, it's tuned to go to about 65 sustained watts in the normal turbo modes with like 90 watts of boost. I'm just maintaining it here at 70 watts, which is about the highest end you can do because eventually uh, the system's gonna overheat. And, well, not overheat, but it's gonna start throttling. Uh, it, and that's totally fine. That's expected behavior. It's going to start throttling. But if you look at the comparison here, as we've given it more and more power, we're getting 115 frames a second where the Surface Pro is still down at 40. So we're getting three to four times the performance, which actually matches the AMD slides, by the way. So uh, I was really quite impressed with the Strix Halo here. I mean, it, it just keeps going and going and going. And it doesn't seem that the curve is even starting to level off very much, which means that those Strix Halo devices that come in desktop form factor, which actually can push more than 70 watts because it's supposed to go up to 120. If you get a desktop one that goes up to 120, you're gonna see scaling that continues to go. Scaling chart, let's go ahead and get the, the numbers on the board here. So you can see that as you give it more and more power, 20 watts, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, as it goes up the scale, you can see that the performance, normally you see a curve like this, like where it just kind of levels out and you don't get more performance. We've seen that a lot with some of these Ryzen chips, but the AI Max Plus, it must have like a lot of cores that let you just keep scaling and scaling. Obviously it's curving a little, but up here at 80 and 85 watts, it's still like I would expect the way that curve is going that that you could still throw more power at it and still get more performance. And that's why I would expect some of these devices that are coming out that are desktops with the AI Max Plus in it, they are going to be pretty good because already here at the, you know, the Z13 kind of if you're doing talking sustained workloads you're only going to get to about 70. I was able to burst get these figures but it would not maintain those it, it will it will throttle back the power limit down to 70 if it gets too hot and it will um, but that's 70 if we if we continued the scale all the way out to 120 you would see 
you know, I would think you would at least get 145, 150 frames per second because the scaling curve is, is going pretty quickly uh, up still, even when we're already past the limits of the cooling solution on the Z13. So really interesting stuff here. Um, let's go ahead and look at some LLM models. Okay, so let's take a look how some of these devices compare when doing large language models, right? Because this is kind of the point. You get that 128 gigabytes that you probably don't want unless you're doing something with very large models uh, or very large CAD projects or something like that. So that w let's take a look and see how they compare. So the Surface Pro, uh, I was able to actually even use the IPEX LLM acceleration and get Llama 7B and prompt processing was 421 tokens per second where regular token generation was 22. Their OG flow under Vulkan was 1074 on prompt processing. It more than double the speed of the Surface Pro on both of these figures. It was 43 in token generation. Now to throw some comparables in here, here's the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, which there are devices available with 128 gigabytes of RAM. And here's how it compares. 364 on the prompt processing, which is actually quite a bit slower than the Z13 with the 8060S. Um, but token generation was uh, actually in favor of the M4 Pro, 49 versus 43. And the M4 Max, obviously, uh, prompt generation, still not as quick as the uh, prompt processing not as quick as the Z13. However, token generation was more than double the speed. So now I kind of go into, you know, I wanted to have these Apple uh, devices in here just as a benchmark to kind of show what you can expect. But let's look at some uh, more modern examples. Uh, Llama 3.18 B. Token generation on uh, Vulkan on the Surface Pro was 17 tokens per second. And the IPEX version actually gave a little bit of a boost, which on the Z13, when you look at Vulcan versus ROCM, and if you're completely lost in the things I'm saying right now, Vulcan is kind of the default that exists. It's, it's, these are basically run times that you run the model through to uh, accelerate things. ROCM is AMD's version of those things that's supposed to accelerate things. And apparently on this iGPU, or at least under LM Studio, I actually found that Vulkan was faster than ROCM. Now this may be different in Linux. I was using Windows for all of these tests. So that is an option as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and compare Surface Pro to Z13. You're getting 18 versus 38. So Quite a big bump being on the Z13, Gemma 3, 12B, and again, no one expected the Surface Pro to perform super well here, but it's interesting to just have it as a, you know, a piece of information to see how well the Z13 is doing here. Now, it got 23 on Vulcan tokens per second in generation on 12B, and Q3, 30B, A3B, you're, this thing's hauling. It's going at 56 tokens a second, which is super usable. Um, this is a mixture of experts models, so it actually only loads uh, 3 billion of those experts at a time, depending on what it's doing, but it has 30 billion total. So it does go quickly. Um, it, it, you know, the, you really can't compare these, these Bs directly to each other. But 30B, A3B is a super competent model. It works really well. So the QN3... 30B, A3B, will fit in the RAM of the Z13 easily. And that's why it's going so fast. Uh, before it was kind of a doubling. Uh, now it's almost a tripling or quadrupling of performance because the Surface Pro, Pro <laughs> cannot fit this entire model inside its VRAM. So at that point, it has to start to offload to the CPU and goes quite a bit slower. This is the upper limit that the Surface Pro can actually process. Um, so actually still a decent model. If you're going to do a model on the Surface Pro, this is probably a good one to do versus 8B because it's going to be just as fast as 8B, but it's going to be a lot smarter. But that's neither here nor there. Um, 
the Z13 much quicker here because it all fits in RAM. And that's the benefit of Strix Halo with all of this RAM available in it. You get this, you know, not the best performance, but for iGPU, crazy performance. Um, and the Z13 with the 8060S can even run QN3 235BA 22B because that is going to fit in the 128 gigs of RAM. VRAM, um, even though you're limited to, at least in Windows, I think there's some ways around this, but uh, 96 uh, gigabytes of VRAM. So you can fit this in at a lower quant and you'll get about 11 tokens per second. So really, really cool that you can fit a 235 billion parameter model inside the Z13 and still get decent performance. Um, now you still would get much better performance with a full GPU stack, but if you want to buy something like an RTX 6000 with 96 gigabytes of RAM, you're spending $8,000 plus to get that. Um, or if you get several 3090s with 24 gigs of RAM and stack those, you're still looking at, you know, quite a bit and you're then you're getting 72 gigabytes of ram so even less than this so anyways it doesn't the z13 isn't especially compelling when it comes to llm uh but if you're thinking about getting an m4 pro with 128 gigs of ram to play around with it the z13 actually looks like a better choice because of that prompt processing and i expect the rocm is going to continue to improve which may bump this figure up to a little bit higher than the m4 pro so if you're bored of llm um or you you just don't care about it <laughs> but this is one of the compelling points of the z13 especially with the 128 gigabytes of ram so let's move on so before we wrap things up i just want to do a few little spots because i think they're important um one is if you saw my pimax crystal review uh, I found this to have really great clarity and Pimax is having a special event through the end of the year where you can get $40 to $100 off the device just for having owned a VR device in the past. It's not a trade-in program that you have to actually send them your VR headset, but if you've owned a VR headset in the past, they will give you $40 to $100 off. So check for that link in the description below. Um, if you're interested in building your own eGPU using some of my 3D printed parts and kit guides for how to build your own eGPU. Also take a look in the description. And if you're a Surface Pro user and you haven't heard about my Surface Pro performance enhancing fan, uh, this is the performance edition of that. We also have several different colors that you can get. Or if you want a custom color, you can get one of those too all in the links in the description. And now let's wrap up with these two devices. So you tell me, which one of these two devices would you pick? The svelte and lightweight, kind of streamlined Surface Pro 11 Intel or the ROG Flow Z13 with its powerful graphics? Um, form factor is really close. Uh, despite the fact that the Z13 is much more of a chunky boy. But other than that, um, I'd be interested to hear your comments because I'm still undecided which of these devices I will be retaining for myself. Uh, it may come down to the screen though. The OLED on the Surface Pro looks so good. Um, and I can always plug in an eGPU on my Surface Pro. But without having to carry an eGPU, you get some really spectacular GPU performance and the 128 gigabytes of VRAM that is, well, 96 gigabytes of VRAM capable that you have in the Z13 makes it compelling as well. So anyways, I'd love to hear your comments about which one you'd pick, and we'll see you on the next video.